to uh, start now. So today I'm just going to be talking about Owasi Iguazu. Um, you are all probably aware they have other properties in South America. Um, Awasi started in the Atacama Desert back in, what was that, really like 2008, 2009 is when they started with the first property in the Atacama Desert. And then a couple of years later, opened up Awasi in Toros del Paine, the Awasi Patagonia property. And then Awasi Iguazu is the third property, um, which was open maybe 2012, I think. Maybe I'm totally wrong. I don't remember. I was there right when they opened. But um, we just want to focus on that. I feel like that's it's the, the least known of the three Awasi properties. And most people are familiar with Iwasu Falls itself and understand the attraction. It's one of the most iconic places to visit in South America, but Awasi does things really, really differently. And I think that just overall, the destination is really not well known. So that's what I want to focus on mostly today. So we're going to dive in right now to uh, Iwasu Falls. So uh, the Iwasi property is actually on the Argentine side. Um, looking at this satellite picture, um, here where the falls are, where it says falls. Um, so they are kind of split across the border between Argentina and Chile. Um, this is the, the airport uh, for Argentina. IGR airport. And then over up here, you have the Brazilian airport on the Brazilian side. You have the town of Porto Iguazu, which is the, the town on the Argentine side. And then this is where the Iwasi property is located. So we're maybe about a 25 minute from the Argentine airport, maybe about 20 minutes to the actual falls on the Argentine side. And then the same thing about 25 to 30 minutes to get over to the Brazilian airport. Um, and about, I'd say, 35, 40 minutes to get to the Brazilian side visitor center. If people are coming to stay at Awasi Iguazu, even though we're in Argentina, we can pick up at either airport. Okay, so transfers in, people can fly in via Argentina, they can fly out via Brazil, or vice versa, or they can fly into Argentina and out of Argentina as well. It doesn't matter, we have access, we have the vehicles that will pick people up from either airport. Um, and again, where we are, we're not in the town. We're kind of have like a private reserve and you're gonna see pictures of the property there, but I just wanted to set the tone here as far as where we are located. Um, in Clark, terms real, of, real quick, um, do you need a visa to go to the Brazil side of the falls? Um, I don't think so anymore. You used to have to do it online. Um, and then they changed that just prior to the pandemic that you no longer needed the, the online visa. So I don't think that is uh, valid anymore, but I'll double check that and we'll add that in the, the email, the follow-up at the end. Cool. A few people um, are saying do not, so. Yeah, I don't think it is anymore. I think it was a thing up until like 2019 and then they stopped this the online visa. So it's not, not needed. Actually, it's not because I went to Brazil right before the pandemic and I didn't have to do any visa. Um, in terms of those airports, so these is, I, I'm just listing here kind of the main air access routes that people are kind of incorporating Iguazu Falls into their trips. Obviously, on the Argentine side, you have frequent flights with three or four different airlines from Buenos Aires. Most of those are coming from the domestic airport, uh, New Barrier Aeroparque in Buenos Aires up to Iguazu. It's about a two hour flight up to the airport there. And then probably the most other common um, Argentine airport that people are flying from is if people are up in the northwest Argentina, they can fly straight to the Argentine airport. There's a lot more flights that come into the Brazilian side. So obviously the, the major routes coming from Sao Paulo or Rio de Janeiro, but there's also flights throughout Brazil. I didn't list them all because I didn't have enough space on the slide um, to do it. But the, the two other kind of routes that I also want to highlight here are the Lima and the Santiago flights, because those actually, we have a lot of, we've historically had a lot of guests come um, via those routes there. So. They have, um, there's only one airline, JetSmart, which is kind of a low, low cost carrier in Chile, but they have a flight that they're starting this year um, from December to April is what they've committed to so far. It's going to fly Tuesdays and Thursdays from Santiago, Chile to fly to the Brazilian airport. And that works really well with us, obviously, with the Awasi Atacama and Awasi Patagonia properties in Chile, that with that Tuesday and Thursday, it basically allows if people want to take that flight over, if they're doing like a, a Chile trip with the Awasi lodges there and want to add Iguazu, they can fly over and they can either do a three or a four night stay, depending on if they're going to fly Tuesdays or Thursdays, come do three or four nights at Awasi Iguazu and then fly back to Santiago. And so kind of incorporate this into a Chile trip just with that, with that flight. Um, Prior to the pandemic, uh, LATAM Airlines was doing a daily flight from Lima to the, the Iguazu Airport on the Brazilian side. Um, they stopped that, obviously, during the pandemic, but we just saw yesterday the news that they're going to be re restarting this the end of October. They haven't yet loaded kind of the timetables or anything into um, 
into the system, so we can't see them. So I'm just saying this is the, they've just announced this yesterday. They're going to be starting that again. But that's also great because the people that are doing a trip in Peru, Machu Picchu, you know, they're doing a full Peru trip. You can just add on Iguazu as a direct flight from, from Lima to get down to the fall. So those are two really great um, air routes that also exist in getting there. Um, so talking about the lodge itself, um, you know, I think obviously a picture tells a thousand words or whatever the, that saying is. So I'm just going to walk you through the kind of the main common area of the lodge. Um, you're probably familiar with the reputation and quality of Awasi. Uh, you know, all the properties are members of Relais Chateau. They have a really great design aesthetic. So this is just kind of different common areas of the main lodge. This is the area where guests get together with the guides to plan their excursions um, daily. There's a beautiful wraparound terrace. I mean, this area is subtropical year round, so it's beautiful weather throughout. So we have this large patio, which people tend to congregate on um, in the mornings and in the evenings. Um, this is just of the bar and restaurant area as well. Another sitting area uh, adjacent to the, the patio, more of the patio itself and the dining area. And goes without saying, obviously being members of Relais Chateau, that the gastronomic experience when you're staying at these Wasi properties is, is you know, off the charts, um, you know, five, six course tasting menus every night. All the menus are personalized for every guest. Um, they do very much kind of with local ingredients and they incorporate a lot of the indigenous uh, recipes from the Guarani people into the meals here. Um, the meals are included, Wasi's rates include the lodging meals and then all of the excursions and private customized. So. I hate putting food pictures, but I feel like I have to with Awasi just to show a couple, couple of food images. Um, in terms of the lodging at the property, um, we have just 14 villas uh, on the property. So same size as the property in Patagonia, uh, the one in Atacama, we only have 10. So that's kind of the hallmark of Awasi is just really small, intimate lodges. In terms of the distribution of the 14 that we have, we have uh, 13 standard villas. It's, it's our, our Norma Villa. They're all the same. And then we have one master villa, which is a two bedroom villa. So good for families that are traveling with older children. Um, Awasi does have an age limit of 10 just because of the upscale nature of these lodges. It's not really for younger kids. This would be more families with teenagers or if we did have like two couples traveling together that wanted to stay in the same uh, villa. So I'll show you some pictures of that. The way that the property is, there's, you know, we're completely in the in the rainforest. You have the main lodge, and then there's these little paths that connect out to each of the the villas. So the villas all have privacy. They're surrounded by forest, and people can either walk to or from the main lodge, or we have electric golf carts to take guests to uh, their villas when they're staying here. So this is just the exterior of one of the the main villas, and here we're looking at what one of the uh, we have 13 of these. These are the the, the standard villas at Awasi Iguazu. So they're kind of split level with the bed up top and then a sitting area down below. Here you can see they can be twin bedded as well if you need that. And that's kind of looking down into the common area and out into the bathroom. Um, again, master villa, a little detail of the, the bathrooms as well. Each of the villas has their own private plunge pool outside as well. So that's standard with all of the villas, including the master villa. Um, so kind of a lovely place to go and relax and refresh when you've come back from uh, from the excursions. This is an image of the, the master villa, which is the layout's a little bit different. As you walk in, there's a central like a kind of living room common area for, for guests to get together. And then there's bedrooms on either side. There's the, the king bedded room, and then there's a twin bedded room on the other side that connect through that central. Um, and we can do two uh, king beds if they want it that way. Say if we have two couples that are, are wanting to share the master villa. Um, but just keep in mind, we only have one of these master villas there. So they're often booked out, particularly during the, the prime dates here. And that's the view of the plunge pool looking out of the master villa and uh, just a detail of the, the bathroom there. Um, Clark, where the property is located. Real quick, Clark. So just to recap, uh, what's the max occupancy in regular villa? And does the couch turn into a sofa bed? Yeah, they can do three in the, in the regular villas. They're going to add one extra bed in there, but no more. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, in terms of the property, we are located on the river. So this is the river downstream of the falls. I'd say it's maybe about 10 kilometers downstream of actual Iguazu Falls is where we're located. Um, we're, the, the property is more so set back in the forest. Um, we do have this kind of sundowner platform, however, that when we have people there just as a special event, we'll sometimes have you know, one a couple down the night and do a sundowner experience for them um, or do a breakfast on this patio. And this is looking at the river and you're looking across that other side is actually Brazil that you're looking at. Um, so that's the, you don't really see the river as much from the, from the property until you walk down to this, this viewing platform. Um, what I want to spend most of the time today talking about is just the excursions, um, at, at Awasi. 
Um, same as in Atacama and Patagonia, where one of the hallmarks of the Awasi properties is that you have a private guide and you have a private vehicle allocated to each of the villas. So every one of the 14 villas has its own private guide and private four by four vehicle. So guests are able to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Um, unlike many of the other properties in Chile or even Argentina that include excursions, most other properties do like shared group excursions with hotel guests and they'll give, you know, this is what's happening tomorrow morning, this is what's happening in the afternoon, sign up for it. Whereas Awasi, that's not the case. You have your private guide and when guests arrive there, they sit down with their guide and they talk about what their interests are. We have an, a, a, a vast excursion booklet that guests can look at ahead of time. They don't need to plan anything ahead of time, but then once they get there, they'll sit down. And we tend to, we prefer to do this on site because obviously like you can even see that picture, they have a weather report of the next couple of days. So it's much better once they've arrived and we'll plan out what people want to do based on it. And then we have our fleet of vehicles, Hilux pickup trucks. And then we also have a fleet of boats um, around to facilitate the different excursions. So if you look at our excursion booklet, you'll see that we kind of break it up into different zones. So uh, where Iguazu Falls is located is in the Misiones province of Argentina. Um, obviously the main, uh, the main attraction there, people are coming to the falls, but the reason why Iguazu decided to build at, the, at, at, at Iguazu was one, was there was nothing at this level of luxury uh, at Iguazu Falls, even though it's a place that gets a million visitors a year, there just wasn't really anything super high end. And secondly, Almost all tourism enterprises for around this area are just focused on getting people to the falls and then leaving the falls without kind of realizing that this is a huge, huge area that has incredible flora and fauna and, and incredible cultural diversity. There's so much to see and do in Missione. So Awasi saw the opportunity with their unique ability with the private excursions to really have people come and not just spend one night to see the falls, but come and spend multiple nights to explore the whole Missione's province. So we kind of have it broken down into these areas. Um, I'll start out with, with area one, area A, which is the falls and, and right around Awasi. So people that are coming and maybe just doing two nights with us, they're focusing on just seeing the falls. Um, the falls do, um, as you, you know, they're separated between Brazil and Argentina. We do have a permit to take people over to the Brazilian side as well. Um, so when guests are with us, they can tour the Argentine side in private with their guide, and they can tour the Brazilian side in private with their guide. And there's multiple different walkways. There's the upper walkways, the lower walkways on the Argentine side. And then there's different routes on the Brazilian side. Another thing that Awasi has is they actually have um, early access to the national park. So I think the national park on the Argentine side opens up around 9 a.m. They allow visitors to come in to the park. Um, and, you know, they get a million visitors a year in this park. So with this early access, we can get in 30 minutes before the park opens. So the private guide goes with the guest and then they can be in half an hour ahead which is ideal because the guides know the flow of traffic with tourists coming into the park. So with that 30 minute early access, they can get people to the main viewpoints well in advance of when the crowd starts showing up there in the morning. So generally the way we do it with guests staying at Awasi is that, you know, they're going to see the falls and they'll see them over multiple days, but we'll try to plan it where we either visit them early in the morning, right when the park opens, which is the best because we have that early access or we go late in the evening because in general, the kind of crowds that visit the park tend to go in the middle of the day. And so it's better to visit, you know, um, in the morning or the afternoon. So that's the falls themselves. And then nearby and in, in kind of the area, I mean, the, the, the name Iguazu comes from the Guarani people who are the indigenous people of this area. Uh, we have a lot of great relationships with some of the, the traditional smaller Guarani villages um, in the area outside of Puerto Iguazu that we, we buy a lot of the handicrafts from them. A lot of the decorations and the lodge you'll see are, are Guarani um, handicrafts. So we do have different villages that we'll visit. So people can get this kind of cultural exposure of visiting Guarani villages. Um, this is a language that's still um, widely spoken uh, in the area as well. So that's quite fascinating to do. So I'd say people are coming to do like two nights. They're generally going to do the falls a couple of times. They'll visit some Guarani villages. And then we also do like a sunset boat tour around the three borders because where the river comes in, you have Paraguay, Brazil, and Argentina. And we do like a sunset tour by boat right there where the three countries come together, which is quite cool. But where Wasi really shines is if you have people that are coming to spend three, four plus nights staying with us, then they get to get out and see amazing stuff. I mean, just to put this into perspective, so you have Iguazu National Park on the on the Argentine side, and then you have Foz de Iguazu Park on the Brazilian side. Those two national parks, the land area of that is over a thousand square miles. A thousand square miles. It's a massive, massive protected area because this is uh, Atlantic rainforest. It was called the Mata Atlantica. It's some of the most unique, biodiverse, uh, neotropical rainforest in the world. 
but you have a million visitors a year coming. And I would say 97% of those visitors coming into these parks are coming just to see the falls and the rest of like, you know, the 999 other square miles of the park, no one goes and sees any of it. So um, Owasi is really one of the only people there that get guests out into this area. So some of their best excursions are these in the zones B, C, and D, which are anywhere from like 30 minutes to 45 to, to 90 minutes away from, from Iguazu itself to get out into the park. I mean, once you leave Puerto Iguazu, you are, you are in the sticks. I mean, you are out in the wilderness. So these are the, the general roads. This is actually Highway 101 that cuts through the park on the Argentine side. So when you head out with your guide, you're going out into to real wilderness to explore. Um, and like I said, it's just fascinating flora and fauna of this region. Tons of toucans, incredible bird life. You have ocelots, tapir, capybara, um, that you can see once you get out there. And again, no one goes and visits these part of the park. So the wildlife is like not used to seeing visitors and it's in abundance. So um, you can have some really amazing wildlife spotting going out on these excursions. Um, three of the ones that they do nearby, this is uh, heading down onto the Paraná River. So this is downstream of the falls. And the Paraná River uh, is basically the, the Iguazu changes name to the Paraná after it goes over the falls and meets at that tri-border area. And then it flows down. And here we're looking at the Owasi boat. Um, this excursion, it's a, maybe about a 35, 40 minute drive south of, um, south of the, the property. And then we have private boats there and we go up the Paraná River. And so you're actually looking at that, that bank on the left side of this picture is Paraguay and the right side is Argentina. So we motor up that about 30 minutes and there's all these hidden waterfalls up there coming into tributaries in the river where we go in and people can jump off and swim. And depending upon the water levels, like that's that same falls just at a lower water level. So there's these beautiful falls that are tucked back into the forest that you can only access by boat. And so we have our boats there. So this is called the, the Alto Paraná excursion just to go and see these incredible waterfalls in the middle of nowhere. Um, Owasi actually working, they have their own private reserve. This is about a 90 minute drive from Owasi and that we do a lot of the like half and full day excursions with guests going into the, it's called the, the Yakui uh, private reserve, which is owned and administered by Owasi itself. So we were the ones that built out the installations there. We have a Kincho and kind of a, a ranger station there. Um, and this is an area we do a lot of walks, bike rides and incredible sea kayak, incredible kayaking up into these flooded forest and tributaries. Um, so really great place for wildlife viewing and exploring. And this is when people are done with their excursion there. We have our own quincho. So the chef actually sends like super elaborate picnic meals and they have their, their lunches there in Owasi's private reserve in, in Yakui. Um, this area, when you drive over that way, about 90 minutes from it, you're also in the prime area where uh, yerba mate is grown, which is the drink that they drink throughout Brazil and Paraguay and, and Uruguay. Um, so we'll often stop at some of the, the, the mate, uh, you don't call them vineyards or not vineyards, but basically the plantations of mate and then see the drying and learn how to prepare mate, you know, it can be kind of exposed to it as a, as a cultural attribute of this region, which a lot of people find very fascinating. So that's really cool heading over there. Another great thing that people don't want to do the 90 minute drive out to, um, to that reserve, we have what's called the, the Uruguay reserve. And this is incredible. There was actually a dam and it's flooded this whole forest. And it, really, really great wildlife sighting around the edges of this, um, this reservoir essentially in this flooded forest. And we built a, a floating dock in the middle of this uh, flooded forest. And so we'll generally do by boat or if people are active, we can do by kayak or by stand up paddleboard out in this lake. And it's incredible bird watching um, from our, our dock there in the middle of the lake. And then we'll do lunch on that platform as well, which is a really unique. And again, Taking into consideration, this is done in privately. So there you go out there, they're not going to be with, with other guests. This would be like the couple just with their guide having this incredible experience deep in the heart of the, the national park. And then the last excursion I want to talk about, so far down here in the south of Misiones, and this is actually where you know Misiones gets its name from, the, the mission province of Argentina. We do these full day trips down to the ruins. Um, um, so these are Jesuit ruins um, that are down near Posadas. And it's a long drive. It's a four hour drive to get down there. We do have guests that do it um, in a day that drive down there and come back. Um, but you know, even though you think about a four hour drive, it's super nice paved highway. We go down and we always, we have like iPads and uh, wireless headphones and people watch the, the, the movie that came out in the eighties, the mission with Robert De Niro, which basically covers the history of this, of these missions. So half of that drive anyways, they're watching this movie getting fired up to see these ruins. And this is something that is, um, really not 
visited much. I mean, this was one of the largest Jesuit settlements in the Americas um, in the 1600s, so 17th century, and vast, vast, massive, massive Jesuit ruins here. And what's unique about visiting these is that they're built with, you see a lot of the, you know, the columns and arches and stuff that you would find from that, you know, the Spanish brought from Europe. But when you go into the detail of all the relief work that was done by the local Guarani tribes, which they were trying to, you know, Christianize here, it's all like, you know, paganistic and, and, and a lot of the uh, Guarani mythology that's that's done into this relief work of these and I mean you can go visit these things that are dating back to 1610 and they're 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 still excavating them I mean they're vast 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 uh ruins that they're doing active archaeological work on and you're going to be you know some of the only visitors here so this is a real highlight particularly people that are coming and spending a longer time and of course we do incredible picnics there as well in these ruins the way this works out well is that there's actually an airport down here, uh, there's called the Posadas Airport, Libertador General Jose de San Martin. There's the Posadas Airport, which has uh, direct flights to and from Buenos Aires. So people want to come up, see the falls, but also see these missions, which are a big highlight. What they can do is, uh, we have most people do this at the end of their trip, they'll come and fly into Iguazu. They'll spend days of there seeing the falls and doing some of our other excursions. And then on the day when they leave, they'll do this drive, the four hour drive in the morning spend the day visiting the ruins and fly out of the Posadas airport back to Buenos Aires in the evening. They can do it the opposite, where they can fly to Posadas. We pick them up, tour those, the Jesuit ruins, and then drive up to uh, Awasi on arrival. So um, this is one of the things that when we first started, it was really hard to talk people into doing it. But as we have people going and doing it and the word gets out, it's like one of the highlights for guests that actually go down and, and see this area. Um, this is just a little sample like showing if you were going to do say two, three or four nights at Owasi, kind of what can be included in this and I'm going to send this to you in the follow up. Um, we do also have our excursion booklet. These are just like suggested to give people an idea because I think often as travel advisors you tell people they say I want to go see the falls You're like okay we can arrange that to go see the falls, but then they don't really know what else is to do in the area, right? They just want to go see the falls. Well, why would I spend more than a night there going to see the falls? It's because there's so much to do there. And when you actually show them kind of sample itineraries, what they can what they can fit in here, it changes their mind. Um, so we have this, but also with our excursion booklet, like this is just a, a suggestion that's not set in stone. That's the whole point of Owasi is guests can show up and they can do what they want to do. If they decide, you know what, I don't feel like doing anything this afternoon. I want to chill out in my plunge pool in my villa and drink a whole bottle of wine. They can do that, have massages, whatever. But if they want to be as active while they're there, they have the ability to arrange exactly what they want to do while they're staying um, at Awasi. And then a little bit about the seasonality here. So unlike, say, Patagonia, which is only open from October through March, um, Iguazu, this is a subtropical forest. I mean, it's it's warm there year round. Um, there's some variance in temperatures, obviously, in rainfall, but um, we do have people visiting here year round. Our low season is only low season uh, between April and September, it, due, simply due to the fact that that's when people aren't going to Patagonia. You know, people are not going down to Argentine Patagonia or Chilean Patagonia um, during this time period when it's the middle of winter that far south. So we have a lower occupancy during that time period but it is a, a year-round destination. Um, with Owasi, we do have, I'll send the rates afterwards uh, with the recording of this webinar, but we do have promotions where if you're combining, say like Atacama, Patagonia, and Iguazu in 10 nights, there's a, a cash discount, which is around, I don't know, $1,200 per person. Plus they, they provide three uh, city hotel nights to facilitate the transfer between. So they'll provide hotel nights in Santiago, in Buenos Aires or in Punta Arenas to, in order to accommodate the, the, the connecting of the Awasi properties. We also have promotions if you're combining Iguazu with either Atacama or Patagonia with a total of seven nights, same thing with a cash discount. And then there, I think there's two hotel nights as well. And then our rates during that April, September, we used to do a pay for three, stay for four, but pretty much the rates are, are, are what that is nowadays with it. Um, so that is it. Under 30 minutes. And I'm happy to answer any questions live if you have them. And if yeah, I'm just seeing here if anybody had any. Oh, any... we just had one from Jennifer. 